Flowing past miles of timber and farmland, the Savannah River gathers strength and volume to give life to a city. Located just 16 miles from the Atlantic Ocean, the city of Savannah sits high on a bluff drawing materials for manufacturing and export from a wide region. Founded in 1733, Georgia's original city has flourished upon the richness and strength of the Savannah. The river has its beginnings in the foothills of North Georgia, and as it works its way through the state, gathers the necessary volume to support an expanding major port facility. In the beginning, the port was noted as one of the important export points for cotton grown in the South. Early in the 1900s, cotton growing declined and lumber and other pine tree products became the primary trade goods. Today, the city's industries include lumber and woodworking mills, paper and bag factories, a sugar refinery, factories making fertilizers, paperboard, gypsum, chemicals, concrete, turpentine, pigments, steel products, and shipbuilding. In addition, a port facility supports not only Savannah-based industry, but international imports and export goods from a major portion of the Midwest United States. After 100 years of heavy industrial use, the river, which had fed lifeblood into the city, became, through thoughtless and gross misuse, a threat to the very life of the ecological process. Well, it was fast approaching the Cuyahoga River in Ohio, where uh, you set a match to it and it burst into flames. It was really a filthy river. It was not an attraction to anyone, including fish. Uh, industries were dumping raw waste into the Savannah River. The city of Savannah was uh, dumping raw municipal waste in the Savannah. It was a very unattractive place to have as uh, a waterfront for this community. Only through extreme pressure from environmental groups, the state and federal governments, and some personal attention by consumer advocate Ralph Nader, did city fathers and corporation executives painfully turn their attention and assets to the repair of the badly abused waterway. Everything from raw sewage to sulfuric acid and petroleum products had been pumped or dumped into the river. The problems of the cleanup have been many. The accomplishments of the task, painful, expensive, and for the most part, successful. In this half hour, we will examine the Savannah, what it means to the area, how the restoration was achieved, and what is yet to be done. Lifeline, a news center analysis brought to you by Trust Company Bank of Savannah. Have you noticed Trust Company Bank all over Savannah? company bank near you. Danny Kite carries a Visa card with him wherever he goes. It complements his Trust Company Bank Master Charge card. With both of Trust Company Bank's credit cards, Danny feels he can meet all of his charge needs. Danny uses them all over Savannah, the state, and throughout the country. Apply for yours at any Trust Company Bank location. Visa and Master Charge both from Trust Company Bank. The pollution of the Savannah River cannot be blamed on one individual or industry. All the citizens of Chatham County must share the blame, as all can feel pride in its restoration. As examples of what has been accomplished, let's take a look at three of the city's largest industries, all three located on the Savannah River, all three major polluters, the Union Camp Corporation, American Cyanamid, and the city of Savannah itself. Recognize that there was a need to do more than we were doing, and, it, and in 1968, we put in operation our 310 inch, excuse me, 310 foot clarifier, which is our primary treatment system. This clarifier takes about 90% of the solid material out of our affluent. After it leaves the clarifier, it goes through a rather large pipe under the river. It's a three and a half inch diameter fiberglass pipe buried in the bottom of the Savannah River and goes into this lagoon, which is a 100 acre lagoon. 
This lagoon was placed in service in 1972, and as you can see, it has a, a number of aerators uh, for churning oxygen into the water. The clarifier is a mechanical system for removing solids. The lagoon is our secondary treatment plant, and it takes out organic material, primarily the dissolved sugar out of the wood, and then secondly, uh, organic material. But primarily, it churns oxygen into the water so that when it goes through the eight-day retention time, the effluent that is discharged into the river essentially meets the requirements of, of both the state and the federal government. I want to speak specifically of this because it is most important to note that the money that we have expended going back to 1968 up through now rep represents a total of about $21 million. And for this $21 million, Union Camp is in compliance and has been in compliance with the regulations pertaining to the traditional pollutants of BOD and total suspended solids going into the Savannah River. I think Union Camp and a number of other industries in the Savannah area have done an outstanding job to comply with uh, federal and state laws. Uh, they have recognized the need to clean up the river and have uh, done so with uh, all good speed. There are some companies in uh, the Savannah area that have not chosen to, to follow that path, but Union Camp has, I feel, done a very good job. American Cyanamid made more news than anyone else in what has been termed uh, foot dragging by the state of Georgia. They say that there wasn't the technological information available to remove the acid waste from the water. Well, we've been very supportive of the efforts of the late Rock Howard and presently Leonard Ledbetter in trying to drag American cyanamid kicking and screaming into the environmental age. Uh, the technology was available to American cyanamid, they just chose not to try to find it. It took some uh, personnel with the Environmental Protection Agency in Atlanta calling around different parts of the country to find out that, yes, there was a suitable alternative to dumping raw sulfuric acid into the Savannah River. When the Environmental Protection Agency provided that information to American Cyanamid, American Cyanamid said, aha, there is now a technology. We'll go out and develop a company that can handle it. In 1973, we broke ground uh, to build the plant. The plant was completed mechanically in August of 1975 and went on stream. At the present time, the plant is operating satisfactorily. We did have a little uh, difficulty in the uh, very early days with equipment pro problems and uh, getting the uh, process to work the way we had it working in the laboratory and pilot plant. As I said before, at the present time, the process is reliable. It has re taken care of all of our acid wastes and has converted the, the uh, waste to gypsum, which is a usable product. We are and have been operating uh, under a permit from the state of Georgia, and we have met the conditions of that permit. We are not polluting the Savannah River at this time. The total investment for the uh, plant uh, represented uh, a approximately $17 million. This is the uh, total cleanup of our uh, waterborne wastes. Well, there were several steps involved in the process of uh, removing from the Savannah River uh, the raw sewage that was being dumped in there by the city's sewage system. Uh, number one, there was a rather detailed study carried out to identify the sources of that sewage. Uh, and to identify those uh, sewer lines, which were combined sewer lines, uh, containing both uh, sanitary sewage and storm water. Uh, at the same time, they studied, uh, identified, or determined uh, the amount of treatment uh, capacity that was required and the best location for that, uh, uh, constructing that capacity. Uh, the next phase of it was to uh, carry out a construction program which involved uh, separating the sanitary the sewage, sewers from the storm sewers. Uh, another phase was to construct uh, 
truck lines to collect or collector lines uh, that uh, into those areas which were not served by collectors that would transport that sewage uh, from uh, the neighborhoods to the new treatment plant. A third phase uh, of the construction program was the construction of the uh, President Street treatment plant itself. The total project cost approximately $30 million. Uh, the treatment plant's cost is approximately $14 million. And the balance of it was used for separating stormwater from sanitary sewage and from, for constructing the collector lines uh, to carry the sewage uh, from the neighborhoods down to President Street plant. Why wouldn't you go close to the President Street treatment facility? What's wrong with it? Well, it's uh, dumping a lot of uh, semi-solid or solid materials into the Savannah River. And uh, I don't see any evidence of the treatment plant being able to deal with the viruses and some of the bacteria that are associated with uh, uh, municipal wastes. Well, if they are meeting environmental standards, how can they continue to dump solids into the river? Well, apparently some of the solids that they dump in are, are allowed by the state. Uh, I'm not sure whether they're currently under compliance or not, though. <coughs> it's uh, functioning correctly in that we're meeting all the uh, the uh, permit limitations that the uh, environmental protection division has has established for it. You've had some problems over the course of the years when the plant, from about the time the plant was was open. First, there was some structural steel problems with a retaining wall in a tank. Then the uh, gearboxes and the aerators continued to break. Um, what is the problem? Would, what is your opinion of, of was it plant design, uh, construction, supervision, or what? Well, I, I believe the only uh, problem we have, uh, <coughs> uh, continuing problem have, is with some of the equipment. Uh, you mentioned the gearboxes, and uh, the last gearbox to be rebuilt just was returned to us today and probably be installed next week. We uh, still are experiencing some equipment problems with the dewatering system, but uh, we feel that the, uh, the equipment supplier will uh, get these problems solved rather soon now. Well, I suspect it's uh, very poor quality control over the, uh, the engineers and the people who actually construct the facility. This is a major problem in Georgia, the, uh, the absence of good quality control. One of the reasons these facilities cost so much is that there are so many overruns. Uh, the state of Georgia has indicated that this is a priority area for their activities in the coming years to look at uh, cost effectiveness of developing municipal sewage facilities. As the savannah nears the coastal area, the river broadens and merges with hundreds of thousands of acres of saltwater marshlands that serve as breeding grounds for aquatic life that is the foundation of the ecological life chain. We find that a number of industrial pollutants, for example, mercury, are accumulating in the marsh areas, and uh, these eventually wind up in uh, either plants or animals that uh, man harvests, so that there is an effect, uh, but it's not readily noticeable. The discharge of municipal waste, of course, uh, can create severe problems in the marsh if. Uh, if too much waste is put in too small an area of marsh. The increased amount of dredging by the Corps of Engineers, this has involved the construction of a tidal gate and a washing system to help with the dredging process. Involved again with that is the striped bass and their spawning habits. Well, we have been monitoring the effectiveness of the tidal gate structure and what it's doing, especially in the area of the Savannah National Wildlife Refuge. Uh, one of the uh, side effects of that tidal gate structure is the increase of salt water farther upstream, so that we're beginning to notice changes in vegetation, and accompanying this will be changes in uh, the spawning patterns, not only for striped bass, but for shad and for other uh, migratory species of fish. Working with the State Department of Natural Resources, we undertook a two-year study this spring. So we are halfway there in uh, determining just what impact 
uh, the installation of the tide gauge structure on back channel on the north side of Hutchinson Island will have uh, on uh, the migrations and the spawning of the striped bass. When the water flows in with the incoming tide, it comes up back river and also the front river past the main part of the city. When the tide reaches flood stage, the flap gates, the 14 huge steel gates on the structure flap shut and do not permit the outgoing tide to go back down the river this way, but force the water to come up through a drainage canal that was cut across the island in this area, and the water flows down Front River, joining the other flood tide waters that have backed up further to the north. And so, we increase the velocity of the flow of the outgoing tide from a range of two to four feet per second to a range now of about three to five feet per second past the city, the, the harbor built up area, and then on out to the ocean. Uh, as, a, as a result of the tide gate operation, we think that there might be some changes in the spawning activity of the fish. We're not sure how much, and we're not sure exactly how the eggs will travel as a result of the installation of the tide gate. That's the purpose of our study determine the impacts on the striped bass population in Savannah River. The Corps of Engineers say that they have constructed an irrigation system where they can keep the salt water from that wildlife refu refuge. Uh, is this sufficient? Well, what the Savannah Corps of Engineers claims to have done and what they've actually accomplished are generally two different things. Uh, I think it's probably a little early to tell just how effective their uh, system of canals has been but it's certainly been disruptive in the Savannah National Wildlife Refuge. Concern over the wildlife in the area has been expressed by not only environmentalists, but the Corps of Engineers as well. A compromise must be reached so that industry can grow along with wildlife. Industry needs depth in the river, and so dredging must continue. Over the years, really since the mid-1800s, the Corps has undertaken a series of improvements of the river we call Savannah Harbor for about 30 miles, from 10 miles outside Fort Pulaski to 20 miles upstream, almost to the Highway 17 bridge. Over a number of years, the Corps of Engineers has widened and deepened the harbor for commercial navigation and also created turning basins so that the ships could maneuver easily in and out of the uh, channel Annually, we remove about 8 million cubic yards. Now, in the past several years, with the dredge Henry Bacon supplemented by contract dredges, that material has been removed for anywhere between 25 cents a yard and 35 cents a yard. Right now, we've, we are about to contract with, uh, with a firm for fiscal year 1978, uh, and uh, we expect that the dredging cost per yard in the front river, the main channel, will be about 20, excuse me, will be about 40 cents a yard, and the sediment that's to be mo removed out of the back channel will be about 26 cents a yard. We've materially reduced the amount of sediment in front river and in our port area. We've about cut it in half, whereas in the past we removed about 8 million yards of material from the front river area over that 20 mile area, we now will be removing about 4 million yards, and the other 4 million yards will find its way into our sediment basin. The incoming tide carries material in suspension in when the tide gates flaps shut. The material that's in the water in this area drops because the flow stops, and the sediment that was carried by the tide drops into the basin. This is repeated twice a day, every day, and ultimately, over a year-long time, we expect that upwards of 4 million yards of sediment would, will find its way into the basin here that would normally be deposited somewhere along this 20 miles of river. We're going to enhance the, the vessel traffic by having less dredge work in the front river and having greater controlling depths. Over the past year, we have increased the controlling depth in Front River about a foot, 
from 35 to over 36 feet. We think that's significant. Part of that is due to the operation of the tide gate, even though it wasn't placed fully in operation until May of this year. One major problem, and probably the most important, the biggest problem facing this general area now, is the 25% pollution that still remains, the surface water runoff. Is there any technology available to take care of this? How can it be taken care of if it can be taken care of? Well, there's certainly uh, technology available to treat uh, surface water runoff, but it's easier to control the pollution at the source. For example, uh, agricultural chemicals that get into the Savannah River or elsewhere can be controlled by uh, a more sparse application of those chemicals to the uh, to the farming area. Um, for certain areas like Oglethorpe Mall, it may be necessary to collect some of the runoff and treat that. Uh, but the city of Savannah and, and the three counties uh, around us are currently looking at plans for treating those kinds of wastes. Well, that's, uh, that particular problem is under study through another project, which is called the 208 study project. And uh, among other things, that uh, study will identify the nine point sources of pollution, which is uh, groundwater runoff or street runoff or stormwater runoff uh, from parking lots and uh, streets and farms and what have you. Uh, what will have to be done is to determine what impact this has on uh, the receiving streams, and that impact will have to be determined on the basis of the uh, use that has been assigned to that stream. If it's a recreational stream, well, it would have one quality, and if it's an industrial stream, it would have another quality, and, and so on. And then uh, a determination be made as to what uh, measures, if any, need to be taken to uh, uh, assemble that uh, non-point point, uh, sources of uh, runoff and uh, provide some sort of treatment. There's a cost-benefit uh, issue here. Does the, uh, do the benefits that would result uh, from uh, somehow uh, processing that uh, runoff uh, outweigh the extreme cost that's going to be involved in doing it. And at this point, we can't answer that question. Well, it depends on what technologies are used to combat the pollution. Again, if it's a preventive kind of thing, it could be very inexpensive. If it means the collection of stormwater runoff from Oglethorpe Mall or from other uh, shopping malls or from the airport or so on, it could be very expensive. What about just runoff from streets into the storm drainage system? Will eventually one day we have to treat that water? Well, federal law indicates that eventually we will, and that's going to be expensive. How much pressure is being applied by environmental people, environmental protection agency and so forth, uh, towards this particular goal? Well, uh, yes, when the, water, the Federal Water Quality uh, Control Act or bill was uh, enacted, uh, they had set a, a goal of clean water by 1983, I believe. Um, However, as we've moved into this program, uh, the costs that have been involved have far exceeded anything that the legislation anticipated. And uh, exactly where we're going uh, in the future, no one knows. Uh, without uh, tremendous uh, infusions of federal funds, uh, there simply is no way to achieve the uh, water quality goals originally envisioned uh, by the legislation. And uh, at the, this point, at least, it does not appear that the uh, federal government is placing as much priority on this uh, uh, program as they did uh, when it, it was first enacted. Uh, certainly, local governments and local communities uh, cannot afford the cost of correcting all of the pollution problems. What is your opinion now of the situation to date? Have we done our job? Uh, if not, how, how can we get the job accomplished? 
Well, I think Savannah is one of the outstanding success stories in cleaning up the water of the Savannah River. We've made tremendous progress, but there is still room to go. Um, bringing the municipal sewage systems into compliance with state and federal laws, uh, making sure that the few industries that do not presently comply do so, and dealing with a surface water runoff. Uh, these are some major efforts that we're going to have to make. Approximately $102 million has been spent by three major industries to clean up their pollution of the Savannah River. The Union Camp Corporation initiated action with little prompting and is in full compliance today. American Cyanamid, forced to comply by court order, is in compliance today but continues a court battle over heavy fines levied against them by the state of Georgia. The city of Savannah is struggling with a pollution abatement plant that has refused to work. The city is still dumping solid waste partially treated into the river, and environmentalists are concerned that all bacteria is not being killed. The city is meeting standards set by the government on a monthly average, but there is some question as to whether the plant is performing on a daily basis. 75% of the pollution has been removed from the waterway, but there's 25% remaining. 1983 is the target date for total cleanup. The Corps of Engineers and environmentalists many times do not agree on what is best for the area and probably never will completely. A compromise must be reached, an agreement which will allow industry to grow for the economic benefit of the area by the same token, an agreement which will ensure the continued existence of the ecological system and its wildlife. A watchful eye must be kept on that process for the very life of this lifeline is at stake. I'm Stan Bowman. Good night. We thought about it a long time before we finally decided to go ahead and get a new car. And we found what we were looking for. But I think our best deal was our auto loan from Trust Company Bank. They completed our loan application in about 15 minutes. And we had a check the same day. So my advice to anyone in the market for a new car is to go to Trust Company Bank. Bobby Chu is a young, established Savannah merchant. When he needs money to fulfill general business requirements, he borrows from Trust Company Bank. Why? The service is exceptional, the people professional, and the rates competitive. Bobby Chu looks to Trust Company Bank to satisfy all of his banking needs. So if you need a loan, stop in and see a Trust Company banker. He's got money to lend. Lifeline, a new center analysis, has been brought to you by Trust Company Bank of Savannah. Since this documentary was edited, the court ruled in favor of American cyanamide in a suit over fines levied against the company by the state of Georgia.